Hi guys, this is Thomas. In this video, I'll show you a 32-bit Windows console application on how to create one. All right, let's get started. I'll continue from the previous videos and uh, let's go ahead and create one. I'll right click on my group and then add new project or you can go file new 32-bit Windows console application. Let's try it this way. Here you go. So it created a uh, stub or uh, the basics of a Windows 32-bit console app. And if you noticed here in the My Project Manager, it added it right at the top, right here. And if you, I don't know if you can see this, but it's, uh, it's the project name is Bold, which usually means it's a uh, that's the default action or the default action of of projects uh, will go to the default menu, which usually is the default one that you see here marked as, as a bold in bold font. If I don't do anything else, press F9 just to run it. <coughs> it detects it hasn't been saved yet. So it will save it in my pro common projects folder, VM projects, Win32 con, and then the project name, save it and saves the assembly, assembles the file and then links it and then executes it. But because it's a console app, you're not seeing anything here right now. So all you're seeing is that it was successfully assembling the the initial code that I have here. And then the final output is 2560 in size. One thing I do want to show you is what would happen if I want to create a debug version of this. Just look at the size, it's 2560 or two a little bit 2.4k. So I want to um you can either do this here or project or run and then run debug. I usually use control shift F9, which is much quicker because F9 executes it, right? And does the same, but if I do control shift F9, like so. Oh, interesting, that didn't work. Let's go switch to my message box over here. Control Shift F9. Ah, oh, there you go. Shortcut must not be working. I'll fix that. So if I press F9 on the message box application, you can see 2560 in size. If I can do, con no, not on the shortcut. I'll check on that, but debug 3600. So it's a little bit bigger. Look at the size of the OBJ. It's 300K. Pretty amazing. So that's just adding the, the symbols that are required for a debugger to help step through line by line. And there's a lot of other information in it. Let's go try the console app again. Switch back. I want uh, debug. Oh yeah, so it does work. I wonder uh, oh, shortcut shortcut is not working for some reason. I have to check on that. Huh. Okay. Anyways, so it's thirty six twenty four file size. If you see that up here, thirty six twenty four. If I do control F nine, control F nine works. Two five six zero without debug symbols. All right, let's go. Let's go see what happens. Uh, you want to see the output of a console app. So for this, I uh, want to see the uh, the console. Let's make this a little smaller so you can see this. So I have, since I ran it one time with release and one time with debug, there will be two subfolders in it accordingly. So I want to go to to the release folder and I see the executable and run it. Keep in mind for console apps, you, you will probably have these this uh, DOS window open all the time, but at least it works. So you see the hello world here from over here when it when it uh, outputs the the message to the standard I/O output, which would be the 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 screen or the console in this case. And then exits with Xcode 0 with no issues and no errors. 
So that's how easy you can create a Windows console application. It's not a DOS application, keep that in mind. It's still a Windows application, 32-bit. This is a 32-bit Windows app. It just doesn't have any visual, typical Windows controls and dialogues in it. Uh, you use this typically for applications where you don't care about the UI, where you do some kind of batch process or some kind of Windows service execution or a batch, I mean, not a batch, a um, scheduling applications for Windows that you typically use uh, console type applications. Yeah, so I think that's very straightforward. All the other features are the same, like all the other applications that we have. One thing I wanted to show you now is, let me save all this, this entire group. Since I already have three projects in here, like so, I can actually right click on my group and say, assemble all projects or build all projects. These can be completely different type of projects. Also, if you notice the build order, I have two, three, and four. I can change this build order by right-clicking on my group and then change project build order. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Never mind, I'll, I'll, I'll look into that one. Should be easy to fix. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, in my previous video, this actually worked. So I'll double check on that. You, you should have been able to change the build order by simply drag and dropping in that window. By the time you see this video, probably I've already fixed it. I try to work on this usually every day when I have some time. And um, if you find any issues, please let me know on visualmasm.com or on GitHub or to send me an email. And I'll, I'll address it as soon as I can. Um, this is really, the build order is important. The more projects you will add to larger projects, that uh, the dependencies... Uh, especially if you create the Windows DLLs, which I'll show you in another video very soon. Uh, if you create a Windows DLL and it's a dependent uh, on some code changes that you made, then the build order becomes very important, right? Uh, so just keep that in mind, build order. Uh, you you might have to play with this. Again, build order you change with right-clicking on group and then on the window that pops up. All right, keep that in mind. All right, I'll see you till next video. Cheers.